In the last 30 days, my newsletter did $17,396 in revenue. I've been building it for about eight months. And a few months back, I did a video explaining how I had grown my newsletter up to that point, And I did everything except share what the newsletter was. And today that's gonna change as promised. So I'll leave the newsletter as the top link in the description. It would mean a lot if you subscribed. It is built for online business owners, so it's perfect. If you're watching this video, you will love the newsletter, but out of transparency, I want you to see it. Now, today we've got a couple great things to hit on, and I have my notes here. We're gonna hit on these five core things. The four stages of growth that this newsletter went through, our name switch and the rebrand, which basically burned $30,000, the team, the financials, and then advice for newsletter owners of any kind. So I have not been on YouTube here in the last three to four months. It's my first time ever taking a break for more than a week in the last six years. So I spent the last quarter just working with our team, both in this company and my e-commerce company. We've been doing really well, just focusing on there, so I stepped away from YouTube. Now, my newsletter is called Profit Snack. It was formerly known as Synthetic Mind, and it started out as a newsletter built around artificial intelligence with a focus on business, talking about not only how to use AI in businesses, but also the business side of AI, all the companies funding it, the new startups, like because that's what interests me. I have a co-founder on this company, a good friend of mine, Jonathan. We've both built multiple multi-million dollar companies, and we love business. All of our friends are pretty pretty much in some format, business people, investors, entrepreneurs. Those are just the conversations, the, the way people think in that industry. I love it. I feed off of it. And naturally, that's just who my circle is filled with. So building a community of people that are focused on that has been a dream of mine for a long time. And that's exactly why I'm here on YouTube. So I got a lot of stuff to go through here. The four phases of growth we have gone through. Number one was organic guerrilla marketing tactics. Super aggressive. This is how we got the first three to 500 people early on. Dozens of posts spamming on all the different red edit boards, posting a bunch of tweets, trying to just grab attention any way we could. And that costed us zero dollars. A lot of effort, high sweat equity, but there was no money being spent originally, right at the beginning. Now, the second phase was organic traction. This started spending a little bit of money, but here's what I mean. I did multiple videos on how to use AI on this channel. I didn't say it was my newsletter, but I mentioned our newsletter. And so we got a couple thousand people from that. We were also posting a lot on TikTok, starting to grow some Twitter stuff that was bringing in five to 10 people a day. And I reached out to about 100 micro influencers who were doing anything in the AI business space. And because micro influencers don't have a lot of followers, 500 to 10,000, I'm getting responses from pretty much all of them. And so we partnered with about 15 people and told them, hey, some of these people were referring us people for free, which was crazy, but I did offer a $1 per subscriber deal and about 10 people took us up on that. So we'd get about, you know, a thousand subscribers a month at most from that for the first couple months. So all of this started trickling in our early subscribers. And at this point, we're three months in, we're growing by 100 to 150 a day. We're not spending a ton of money. All is really well. We're building the base, getting good feedback. And so now we want to start scaling, which brings us into the third phase of growth. This is where I was able to automate the process of reaching out to all these influencers and getting other people to promote us for a fee. There's a platform called Sparkloop. And if you watched the last newsletter update video, you would know that we were spending a lot of money on there. That budget got absolutely axed and chopped and it's currently been zero for a while. And I'm gonna explain exactly why and show you how you can actually use it effectively and we are going to again. But there's a lot of stuff here. We ramped up and spent over 60,000 on the platform very quickly. And to this day, in total, we spent about $70,000 with Sparkloop. Now, as of recently, we have not spent much on Sparkloop. What we did is we went into the partner program and we were able to edit our settings to filter each person who was allowed to promote us. You see, there's pending partner applications. So we would go here and only accept referrals that we would pay for from people that were approved audiences. Because what was happening is we were getting a lot of unengaged subscribers. And you can set filters here under the engagement screening where you only pay for people that opened at least four emails or you know, subscribers must take at least three unique click actions. You can set up whatever parameters you want. So we weren't paying for all of our subscribers, but we noticed 
on average, that the overall audience from Sparkloop, which has been a good bit of people, this is just in the last 30 days we slowed it down, are not the most engaged. A 37% open rate and a 1.55 click-through rate. We currently have about a 45 to a 48% open rate through the subs we're getting now, not on Sparkloop, and our click-through rate on that is about 3.5. So these people are significantly worse, and really the open rate is, is one metric, but the click-through rate is the primary one we're looking at. You know, We can get people that are 2.5 times better and more engaged. And that is the stuff that drives results. And when advertisers are paying you money, you need to be able to get them results. That's what matters. So we just took a look at this traffic source and it didn't really make sense. These people weren't engaging. Our list was continuing to grow, but our clicks were staying the same. And that brings me to the fourth phase of growth that we've been going through now, which is paid ads. I wanna quickly say I didn't add this as a line item, but we've also spent about 15 to $20,000 in other newsletters. And that's been a really effective source of growth, just a lot of active work communicating, and it's hit or miss, but we found a few that are good. Those people are super engaged, but we pay about $3 a subscriber for them. So we have that as some of our growth, but not a primary. The final one that I wanna mention, the fourth stage of growth is Twitter. I have two UTM links, so this number is a little more like 2,500, but uh, continuing to grow. And right here, we kicked up another UTM link, so it's, it, it is still growing. But here has been the numbers from Twitter. We did pause uh, for like two days there when we did the transition with the name because the link was broken and stuff. So if you go down here and take a look, the open rate, 43%, and the click-through rate, 35 So significantly more engaged people. Of course, that's because the intentionality is higher. Now, here's the big thing. On SparkLube, just like how Beehive has like a power boost thing or whatever, people are getting the pop-up after they subscribe to a newsletter with a recommendation for others, okay? And people are getting paid to do that. And so SparkLube has two features, a growth side and a making money side, which is called Upscribe. So we actually get paid money to refer people to other newsletters when they subscribe to ours. There's a pop-up there. There. And the whole thing is, when we're growing through Sparkloop, those people don't go back through our Sparkloop. So we can't make money off them, which is fine, but it's still a cost. So we are bringing in on average about $1.30 to $1.50 per subscriber that we get through Twitter ads. So I'm paying about $3 on a bad day for these subs. So we're out of pocket about $1.50. I'm just gonna say $2 absolute maximum for a much higher quality, more engaged person. And that's a number we're very comfortable with. Now, I wanna point out before we did the rebrand and the switch from synthetic mind to profit snack, the ads were geared towards AI, talking about, hey, if you wanna learn AI, like subscribe here. That's a hot topic, right? AI is new, AI is sexy. And we would get subs for about a dollar on Twitter. And going into the business niche in general now, of course, that is more expensive. So that's why we're seeing 250 to $3, some days a little bit over $3, sometimes up to four. So it is definitely more expensive. I'm still working. Like this morning, I launched another like 15 split tests on different creatives and audiences. So still trying to work on that. But another thing I wanted to mention on the rebrand side of things is we lost a lot of subscribers going through that process. And actually, before I dive into that, we have removed probably about 30,000 subscribers from our list because they don't meet our engagement criteria and they're not actively opening and clicking and being involved, we don't want them on our list because the subscriber number is just showboating. Like somebody has a million subscribers, that doesn't actually mean anything. If people are not engaged and they're not opening and clicking on advertiser stuff and taking action, you don't have a business. And so that's the core metric that matters. And so currently, as I'm filming this, we have about 65,000 people on the list. We've probably hit 90, 95 you know, and we've removed a lot of people. And so going through the transition, especially we were getting, you know, three, four, 500 unsubscribes per email in the beginning. And that's slowly fading off. We knew that would happen, but it's just been an interesting thing. So let me dive into some of the details on this growth stuff. And then we're going to get into the financials, the team and kind of where we're going from here. So number one on the organic guerrilla marketing, super high effort, and like, yeah, I would definitely recommend building an audience and being able to grow organically. It's great. But I would definitely do early partnering, just like what we did. Micro influencers have been super beneficial. And if you can get any sort of traffic source yourself, you know, go viral on TikTok. You know, I definitely do Twitter. Like do that to get some subs is really beneficial. Sparkloop, which is the third one very lazy way to grow. <laughs> it's hit or miss. Uh, the reason it didn't work as well for us is we were just paying a lot of money for the subs. Had we been doing the same thing, but paying a dollar or a dollar 50, right? At the beginning, we were paying 350, but most of our subs, we paid about 250 for. Um, you know, we still make money on it. It's just a much longer payback period. And we'll get into the financials in a second. So at our peak, we were hitting about 2000 new followers a day, most of that through Sparkloop. So we decided to stop that again, because 
the list was growing, but the engagement really wasn't, the clicks. And so that was the big problem. It was a huge red flag. And then the fourth one, me being in charge of marketing when Sparkloop then stopped and our growth plummeted, I'm in charge of marketing. So I had to go back to the drawing board and that's where I tried to figure out paid ads. Ran Facebook for a little bit, wasn't working too well, and then got fired up on Twitter. Set up an ad account there, took a week or two of testing and hit the ground running. We were getting 100 to 200 subs a day with the AI stuff and then had to again swap and shut that down and then now go into the business, which is doing less. I'm not really scaling it aggressively and the cost is higher, but we're growing like 50 subs a day right now there and I do plan on ramping that up to about 200. We're, we're okay spending the money on that. Now, to talk about our rebrand, uh, which I love, by the way, go go subscribe to the newsletter if you're not already. It's the perfect place for online business owners and stuff. Um, we have nothing to sell there. The newsletter's free. We just we have advertisers in there, and that's it. Um, it's really interesting because I love the new site. I love all this stuff. We gave away $2,000 of Profit Snack t-shirts for free, didn't even charge shipping, and you know did that to our most engaged people who clicked the link first before they sold out. We tried to make it really cool. And I want to point out here, we did a transition because we weren't interested in AI particularly. AI shouldn't be the center. It was a thing. It was a just like any marketing platform can be a thing, any style of selling. It shouldn't be a core. I think that's a mistake. And we saw about a hundred, literally a hundred other newsletters popping up in the AI space. Now, we were like the third biggest for a while. And we were growing 2,000 a day. We could have ramped that up to four. We could be one of the biggest. Right now, we could have 200,000 subs all day long guaranteed in the AI space. We'd be like the third or fourth biggest. And build that into business. It would sell. It's just not interesting. And the goal here with John and myself was not to build a business to, to you know make half a million dollars or sell it for a million. That's not the goal. Like what I'm explaining to you here is not the most efficient way to build a newsletter to make money. That was not our objective. We will make money on it. But we're taking a long approach with really building the audience and the relationship there. So a lot of the little things that you're hearing us do, they don't make sense to most people. That's because their goal is different. Right. So a couple of things here with the name switch is we definitely lost a lot of subscribers. We got a lot of negative feedback when we did that transition, but it's okay. Like we want people divided when, with the AI stuff. Uh, nobody is really interacting with us. It was kind of like people were indifferent, like, eh, like we don't really care about their content. It's good, bad, but it's, it's all right. Like we weren't getting the feedback we wanted, you know, as we were growing, we tripled our list size, but the amount of polls and feedback we got, which is a section at the bottom remained the same. And again, just like the clicks, it's a huge red flag. So we wanted people to lean in. Man, the feedback we've gotten since we changed. A lot of people saying, screw you, man. But a ton of people are like, this is the best thing ever. And that's what we wanted because we didn't have either of those before. So we wanted people to really have a passion towards it. Now to talk about the financials, this is the hot part. We have spent $140,000 in total. Stick with me here. 25 of that has been in team expenses, which includes sales commission. We've spent 105,000 in growth, okay? And about 70 of that was Sparkloop. Uh, and we spent about 10 grand in operational software buying leads for advertisers. Now, currently, we've done a little over 50,000 in revenue, give or take. Last month was 17. So we're on the right track. I know minimum we can do 10, 12, 15,000 a month. So that's where we're at. Like last month, we sold 90% of our ad space, which was great. Finally starting to hit stride with the sales process. Currently, our overhead is much less than it has been for the last five months. In the previous video, I talked about spending crazy money. That was the, the point we were at mostly off growth for a very short window of time. Uh, I'll talk about our team and how we've trimmed them back recently. But we're no longer needing to add cash to the business right now, which is great because me and Jonathan have fronted a lot of money for this business. Uh, we sell our ad space based on a $35 CPM, which is tied to our open rates, not subscribers like most people. So it's been a much better pitch for advertisers. It's a higher CPM than other people charge, but it's off actual engaged metrics. So we can do a video on more specifics. Currently, just so you know, on the business side of things, uh, we have a payback period for, of about five to six months on average right now for any subs we acquire for $2. And on average, we're probably a little bit under that because of organic and other stuff. So that's really nice. That's a conservative rate. We're fine with that. Most businesses would be thrilled to spend money and they'd make that back within six months. That's insane. So this business right now, if we were to stop spending money on growth, we could bring in about one hundred forty dollars to $150,000 a year which is about what we've spent, okay? So for a business that could be run with just the two founders, like we could easily handle it ourselves. We don't need a team. We do have a team. Um, that's a business that if we just kind of stopped the growth and that means we'd grow very slowly uh, and just did that for a year, we could go sell this thing for half a million all day long. That would happen easily and that doesn't interest us in the slightest, like not one iota. And so 
we're in a good place. We spent a lot on growth, um, but we have a good base. And so we went ballistic with the growth and lost a chunk for sure due to the transition. And we've trimmed a lot of people off the list, but it's still a good position for us to be in. So the team side of things, um, we had six team members in a VA at one point, which was a lot of people um, running really cool meetings every week, doing a lot of stuff, you know, designers for the rebrand and really leaning into the content. So there's been a writer, two additional people helping with product development and ideas underneath it and for the company itself, um, and then two salespeople actually at one point, um, and then a, a virtual assistant. And so these people like were not cheap employees on a lot of that. So we had a bloated team, a lot of expenses. We've been tra- trimming that back. Right now, our team expenses are about $5,000 a month because we trimmed it so significantly. So the business itself is running nice and smooth. We're at a good point. We have a base asset of our list with over 65,000 engaged people. The the advertisers we're working with, we have like a 30 plus percent, maybe a 35% repeat advertiser rate. We wanna get that to 70. We wanna double that number. Because if you can just advertise with the same five, 10 people and they just pay you for one or two spots a month, it makes life so much easier. And that's what the big newsletters do. So we've had a couple big companies, billion dollar companies working with us that consistently promote once or twice a month. And that's been amazing because their results are good. And so a lot of newsletters, especially in the AI space, are not actually getting people results. And the problem is they're focusing on sales and it's this wheel, just like any business. It's like if people aren't coming back, you're just turning the wheel of sales. And eventually it runs dry or your lead source is screwed up or it's too expensive. It's also annoying. It's a lot of effort. It's ridiculous. And so, you know, it's just one of those things to think about. Um, And that that pretty much covers all my notes on here. Here's something I have to say for anybody who wants to start a newsletter. Go for it. Understand your cost. Me and my friend Jonathan mapped this out from day one before we had one subscriber. And we knew we'd spend about 140,000 exactly to get to break even. And that is exactly what happened. Okay, we're not, I mean, we, we've both built multiple businesses, so I'm not going to let a comment on a previous YouTube video be like, oh, we're doing the wrong things. That's what a lot of people said. We're not even optimizing for cash in this business. And so don't do exactly what we did if your goal is different. Definitely spend money on growth. Find a way to offset it. Definitely grow organically. That's the best, biggest hack you can ever do, and they're the most engaged subscribers. And on top of that, get your advertisers' results. If you can do that, not just kind of scam people on the sales side and, and actually like get quality people and produce quality content, like each newsletter we, we put out, minimum 20 hours of work that goes into that. We have two people that handle that full time. And so it's like a lot of research, a lot of effort, and a lot of fun. So you got to love what you're doing because the results are not going to be quick. This is definitely the like most unprofitable and slowest building business I've ever built. And I knew that going into it. And it's also one of the most scalable And that's what I really like about it. It's a very consistent, scalable business. I've built e-commerce companies that have crushed a million dollars in a month before. The problem is Facebook can randomly take your ad account down for no reason. And they have. And so with email, it can't really be disrupted. And you're building a community of engaged people and bringing them value. And again, it can't be disrupted. That's what I like about it. So... That's what I have for you today. Subscribe to my newsletter. It'd mean a lot to me, but I know you'll enjoy it if you like this video because we talk about online businesses, marketing hacks, you know, building companies, investing, uh, online courses. We just, we break down everything. We interview dope people. We do a lot of fun stuff. We do the stuff that interests us as business owners. So if that's something that interests you, go ahead, subscribe. It's free and it will always be free. I hope you enjoyed this video. It'd mean a lot to me if you just left a like on the video. That's it. Maybe say hello down in the comments. It'd mean a lot to me. And uh, with that being said, I hope you crush it with the newsletter or whatever online business you're doing. This stuff is just so much fun.